Greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome to the Friday edition of Brian's Bible Break as we unpack uh, verses from God's Word and reflect on them. And uh, this morning we're in the 25th Psalm and reading verses 4 and 5 um, and reading from the New Living Translation. And let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for guiding us through this week. We thank you for uh, meeting us each day as we reflect on your word. And we thank you for your wisdom, which is poured out upon us, Lord, to guide us and encourage us each day. And so, Lord, as we come into your presence again this morning, we come to hit the pause button in our day and just rest in you and to reflect on your word and to Listen for your still, small voice speaking to us. And so, God, we pray that you would quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask these things in his mighty and precious name. Amen. So, Psalm 25, verses uh, 4 and 5. Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. This is a psalm of David, a psalm that may or may not be familiar to you. Um, as I was reflecting on these verses, they sounded awfully familiar to me, and I realized that it's because we looked at um, a couple of verses farther along in this psalm a while ago, and they are similar, but not the same. And so David is crying out to the Lord. He, uh, this, this psalm follows on the heels of Psalm 23, the familiar shepherd psalm. And it's a psalm that, that where, where David is looking for direction from the Lord. And how often do we look for and indeed need direction from the Lord? And so David begins by saying, show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. We need the Lord's help in knowing which path to take, in which road to follow. As Proverbs 16 and 9 states, Man makes his plans, but the Lord directs his steps. And so often, we think we're on the right path. We think we're going in the right way. But we haven't sought the Lord. We haven't sought his wisdom. We haven't asked him to actually lead us in the way we should go. And that idea of the Lord leading us is, is often foreign to us because we think we're supposed to be leaders. But interestingly enough, when you look back at the historical records of, of antiquity, biblical antiquity, and you think of the shepherds, they didn't actually go before the sheep. They actually drove the sheep. They actually were behind the sheep, directing them, which is an interesting, an interesting contrast. Because we think of, of shepherds, shepherds as leading the sheep, going out in front of the sheep and leading them in the way they should go. But that's not actually how they operated. And that's what gave the stark contrast when Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and I go before my sheep and lead them. And my sheep hear my voice and follow me. And that was a great contrast to 
the, the, the practice and the understanding of what it meant to be a shepherd in those days was countercultural. And so David is likewise being countercultural in his request of the Lord. That he's humbling himself before God and saying, God, show me the right path. Point out the road for me to follow. He's surrendering himself to the Lord and asking for the Lord to actually direct his steps, for the Lord to lead him, for the Lord to show him the way. And then he says in verse 5, Lead me by your truth and teach me. We want to be taught by the Lord. We want to know his truth. And we, need, we want to walk in his truth. And so our prayer, as with David's, is that we want the Lord to teach us his ways, to show us his ways, to show us how we are to walk humbly with him. David acknowledges this truth. He says, for you are the God who saves me. God is the one who saves us through the shed blood of his one and only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life on the cross and at Calvary for our sake, paying our sin debt in full. I often chuckle at, at when I think of, of, of pastors who talk about all the people that they have saved. They haven't saved anyone. I haven't saved anyone. I can't even save myself. It's God who saves. It's Jesus who who made possible the way of salvation through his blood. God alone is the one who saves. Now, he uses us as instruments of his purpose, of his saving grace, of his saving purpose. He uses us to bring people to Jesus in order that they can place their faith in him and be saved. But we don't save people. God saves. And David makes this truth very clear and plain. For you are the God who saves me. And indeed, as we remember from the, from the birth narratives in the Gospels, Jesus is given, is, is, Mary and Joseph are told by the angel to give their son the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. And so David concludes by saying, all day long I put my hope in you. Because God is the one who shows us the right path, who points out the road for us to follow, because he leads us by his truth and teaches us and indeed is the one who saves us all day long, we put our hope in him. Because of that truth, we can put our hope in him. Because he has offered us living hope through his son, Jesus Christ. And he is true to his promises. He is true to his promises. He never will abandon us or forsake us. He will never not fulfill his promises. Jesus said, knock and the door will be open to you. Seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given to you. And he is true to those promises. When we knock on the door, Jesus will open it to us. When we seek him, we will find him. 
And when we ask, it will be given to us. When we ask the Lord to show us the right path to take, the right road to follow, when we ask the Lord for, for truth and for him, for wisdom and for him to teach us, he will do it. And so we have this living hope that guides us and upholds us and encourages us each and every day because he is faithful and he will do it. When we surrender ourselves as David has in this psalm, when we humble ourselves before the Lord and ask for his help, he will do it. And so friends, I don't know what this day holds for you, but I know that God is willing and able and waiting for you to ask, to seek him with a humble heart and surrender yourself to him this day. And he will lead you in the way you should go. All you have to do is ask. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. For you are indeed the God who saves. Jesus, we thank you that you are willing to give your life on the cross, shedding your blood in order that we may have salvation for all eternity forgiveness for our sins. We thank you, Jesus, that you are indeed the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through you, and that we place our hope and our faith and our, and our trust in you because of that truth, because you are the one who saves. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you meet us each day where we are. And you grant us wisdom. And you teach us and you direct our steps and lead us in the way we should go. And so, God, we pray that you will continue to guide us, continue to make your face shine before us, continue to place your hand of favor upon us. That in all ways, in everything we say and do, we will humble ourselves before you, surrender ourselves before you, and give you all the glory and the praise as we worship and adore you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Next week's a little bit going to be a little bit different because we'll be Monday, Tuesday, I'm off Wednesday, and then Thursday, Friday. So it'll be a little bit broken up. But we'll see you next week for more reflections on God's Word. And as we are at the end of another week, I just want to encourage you to not forsake the gathering of God's people on the Sabbath day. And if you're able to, uh, to gather at your local church for worship, we are uh, open for in-person worship here and and uh, with limited capacity, but we are open and uh, we look forward to welcome you, welcoming you on Sunday morning for worship. And if, uh, if you're not able to join us in person, uh, we will be live streaming our worship service online on this YouTube channel uh, beginning Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And so you can join us there. Uh, also want to just can remind you to continue to pray for your local church and to not... Uh, to continue to uh, offer your tithes and gifts to the Lord through your local church. Remember that our offerings, our tithes and offerings, are a part of our worship of the Lord. And so we encourage you to continue to support your local church with your prayers and with your tithes and offerings. And so, friends, have a blessed weekend. Um, seek the Lord in all you do. Be kind. Be safe. Love your neighbor as yourself, but enjoy the peace of the Lord this, this weekend. And we look forward to seeing you next week as we get together to in the presence of the Lord to reflect on his word. So friends, go in peace.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. And all God's people said together, Amen. See you next week, friends.